Your daily therapy routine is probably the least important component when it comes to healing your brain after a neurologic injury. I know that might seem a little controversial, but it's true. And today we are gonna go over two key nutrients that I think are absolutely essential to getting your brain to heal and more importantly, rewire after a neurologic injury. And it comes down to protein and creatine. Protein creates the structure, creatine is the battery that allows that structure to be created. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist with over 22 years of experience helping people restore their mobility and their independence after a neurologic injury. And my goal for you is that you have all the necessary tools you need to take full ownership of your rehab and your overall health. And all that said, let's start by talking about protein. Protein isn't just a macronutrient, you know, your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats which is how most of us think about protein. And yes, if I had to give one macronutrient that I think is the most health promoting, again, a little bit controversial, it would probably be protein for some of the things that most of you who watch this channel already know. It's satiating, which I've talked about quite a bit. It has the highest thermic effect, meaning that the energy required for your body to break down protein is a little bit higher. So technically fewer calories if you're trying to lose weight. Protein will also help you to regulate your blood sugars if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic. And one that doesn't really get enough attention, but animal protein actually takes longer to eat. So in some cases, I actually do think the reason there is so much correlation between higher protein diets and losing weight is that it just takes longer to chew and break down and swallow so you may eat fewer calories. But that's for another video. Today, I really want to talk about protein as it relates to its impact on neurotransmitters. And for those of you who have been around for a while, you don't really need the deep dive explanation on this, but neurotransmitters are just how neurons communicate with each other. We have neurotransmitters that upregulate or turn a neuron on, and we have ones that inhibit or downregulate a neuron. And proteins impact on growth factors, the little molecules that are necessary for our brains to grow new synapses, which is kind of where neurons have the potential to meet to create those new neural networks, and to a lesser degree, grow new neurons. And how does protein do this? Protein is made up of amino acids. And amino acids aren't just these little molecules that are just floating around in our blood and in our cells. Amino acids are little molecules that have a very specific purpose for driving neuroplasticity or that brain rewiring. For example, glutamine, which is an amino acid, fuels glutamate and GABA. Now remember, I mentioned those neurotransmitters. We have neurotransmitters that excite an adjoining neuron. We have neurotransmitters that inhibit an adjoining neuron. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And glutamine is the amino acid that fuels those neurotransmitters or kind of catalyzes the process of them doing their job. Tyrosine fuels dopamine, and dopamine is a critical neurotransmitter when it comes to motivation and learning. And tryptophan is another neurotransmitter that fuels serotonin, which is helpful for managing or regulating mood and emotions. So you can see how these amino acids or these molecules are absolutely critical for every process of the brain's ability to rewire after a neurologic injury. Dopamine, a neurotransmitter, gives you the ability to focus. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that kind of regulates your mood once you hone in on that meaningful activity. GABA and glutamate are the neurotransmitters that turn a neuron on or upregulate a neuron or downregulate a neuron, critical for executing on movement, but also in learning. And all of these amino acids are present in animal proteins. Now let's talk about creatine. For many, many years, decades, 
I would absolutely stay away from creatine. I thought it was for bodybuilders. I thought it was going to make me big and bulky because that's what I always associated it with. But there's been some exciting and really compelling evidence that's come out in the last, I don't know, probably decade that's probably just now getting a little bit more attention of the impact of creatine on learning and memory and potentially, based on some evidence, having a positive impact on symptoms with people that have Alzheimer's. So we know there's some physiologic mechanism that's going on in the brain when people take a creatine supplement. And so I've been very curious about this for probably the last couple of years, and I'm growing more and more convinced that people after a stroke could benefit from supplementing with creatine. Now, full disclosure, I am not a medical doctor. You should never start a supplement without talking to your doctor first and making sure that it is safe for you to take this supplement. But that belief that creatine is really like a muscle fuel isn't really the full picture of everything that creatine is capable of doing. Creatine is actually a fuel source for the brain. So that's why earlier in the video, I kind of called it like the battery of the brain. You have your main energy supply, and then you have a backup battery that can kick in when your main energy supply is limited. Why is energy so important when it comes to brain healing? Well, ATP, which is the energy currency of the brain, is required not only to keep the brain clean, but also for getting these neurotransmitters to move, be deployed from one neuron and then taken back up into that neuron so that it can be used again. But really, long story short, nothing happens in the brain without ATP. So what exactly does creatine do to help kind of almost create more energy in the brain? Well, ATP, once it's used, it's turned into ADP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate, ADP is adenosine diphosphate, meaning three phosphates gets turned into two phosphates. What creatine does, just to keep it simple, is it keeps more what we call phosphocreatine kind of in the area, and that phosphate on that creatine, when energy levels are low, can actually be used to turn that ADP adenosine diphosphate back into ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is again that energy currency of the brain. And so mechanistically, it makes sense to me. Now, full disclosure, pretty susceptible to the placebo effect, but I take it and I definitely feel better on the days I take it. Now, mechanistically, that shouldn't really make sense. But for me, again, probably a little bit of a placebo effect going on to feel better on the days that I actually take the creatine. That's still been my experience. Now, why am I talking about creatine and protein kind of in the same video? Like, why didn't I just make two separate videos on this? Because they absolutely go together. Animal protein is the only source of creatine. So if you are someone who does not eat animal protein, you're not getting creatine, which I think is a double hit. Now, I'm agnostic as far as a best diet, but I would say for neurologic recovery, or even for most neurodegenerative diseases, I would say that a vegan diet is probably on the bottom of that list of best diets for someone who really wants their brain firing on all cylinders and healing after a neurologic injury. In addition to all those benefits I mentioned at the at the beginning of like optimizing your health as far as satiety, the thermogenic effect of protein and regulating your blood sugars. In addition to all that, you're also getting that critical supplement of creatine. So again, the takeaway from this video is protein are the building blocks, like the scaffolding that create the structure, those amino acids. Those amino acids are absolutely essential in getting neurons to communicate with each other via those neurotransmitters. And creatine is the battery that fuels the entire process. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully all of that made sense. 
hopefully I have compelled some of you guys to talk to your medical team to see if a creatine supplement might be right for you. And more importantly, how what we put into our body can have a direct positive impact on brain healing and brain rewiring after a stroke. But if you like this video and the stuff I went over resonated with you and you found it helpful, I've taken everything I've learned over these 22 years of helping people with neurologic injuries restore their mobility and their independence, I've put all of that information into a toolkit to help you take full ownership of your rehab, and it's available to you 24-7, 365 days a year. So no gaps that you might get with traditional physical therapy. It's really putting all the tools in your hand optimizing your brain and your body's potential to reach that next level in your recovery. To learn more about our membership programs and to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com. You can also visit our website if you want to schedule a discovery call to talk to someone in person about your challenges and we can help you decide whether or not our program is right for you. But that is it for this video. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.